Hi everybody, I'm Barefoot Mo from Barefoot Canada and today I have a very special guest. He's a holistic physician and 16-time Ironman finisher, also known as the Sock Doc. Dr. Steve Ganjemi is joining me via Skype from Chapel Hill, North Carolina. And I want to welcome you, doctor, and thank you for taking the time to talk to me today. Thanks, Mo. Happy to be here. Okay, great. So, uh, well, tell us a little bit about yourself and your practice. Uh, well, my practice is pretty much, actually, I went to school uh, for chiropractic uh, back in 1994, graduated in 98. So I'm a chiropractic physician. That's what my doctorate is in. And I have a bachelor's in nutrition. So my background has always been more of the holistic, natural, what some people term, al term alternative today, that sort of medicine and um, type of uh, natural methods to healing. And my practice is pretty much, it's a family practice. I see families from, you know, obviously the parents to grandparents to little babies with ear infections or kids who get sick or injured. I see women with hormonal problems. I see elderly people who feel older than what they should be. And I see a lot of athletes, competitive, professional well, uh, one's from UNC right here, University of North Carolina in Duke, close to my close to my practice, and a uh, little bit of everybody in between. So I might see somebody with an ear infection or an injured knee or uh, hot flashes all on the same day. Okay, so basically it's a it's a general physician kind of practice, but with a very holistic approach to it. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Good. Now the your nickname, the sock doc. Uh, tell us about that. How you got that nickname? Well, last year I was talking to a, a friend of mine named Bill Kotoski, who's an editor and uh, writer of several books. He lives out in California, and he actually runs a website called Zero Drop, which is just like it sounds. You know, it, it's a barefoot type uh, of a website. Okay. And he, um, we were just talking one day, and I was telling him how. I pretty much just wear socks in the office when I'm seeing my patients. So he came up with the name Sock Doc, just okay. as a little, uh, as a little, you know, little quick little name that sort of was catchy, and uh, we sort of just went with it, made a website off that. Since we were looking to make more of a natural, naturally minded uh, website, different than my other um, office website, DrGanJemmy.com. So okay. that's how it pretty much came about. Okay, so if we want to take a look at your uh, at your uh, uh, doc uh, sock doc uh, website, how do we find how do we find that? Sock dash doc dot com, okay. and that's s o c k dash d o c. Okay, d o c dot com. Okay, and uh, okay, so tell me about your patients. Like, how do they react when they see you wearing uh, uh, no shoes in the office? Yeah, well. Um, and actually right now, especially since it's so hot here in the summer and, and uh, even some winter months, if it's not too cold, we had a really mild, mild winter. I think you guys did too. Um, I don't even wear socks in the, in the office. I just barefoot right from leaving the house, driving my truck into work. Okay. I know you drive barefoot and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm in the office all day just completely barefoot with my lab coat on and my dress pants and dress shirt. So, you know, they're all pretty much used to it now. Um, Sometimes I'll get a new patient who isn't familiar with or as familiar with my type of work, and it, they, they always look to my feet right away as I walk in to greet them. <laughs> right. I, yeah. I saw a guy when I started when I started going completely barefoot last uh, last summer. He uh, first thing he said to me, "Well, hello. I guess I'm a little bit overdressed to see you." <laughs> <laughs> That's good. So, but you know, I mean, I, I think. I, I, I've heard from other doctors and other patients that, you know, they, they really respect what I do. And it, uh, you know, I'm not going to tell somebody to, to go barefoot in their house or in their office if they're able to, when I'm not doing it myself. Right. Okay. So overall, uh, do you consider yourself a barefooter other than being, uh, uh at the office? By that, I mean, do you, do you consider that you, you, do you lead a barefoot lifestyle outside of your practice? Oh yeah, definitely. I mean, I'm mostly running. The majority of my runs are barefoot. Okay. You know, unless I'm on a, you know, I, I don't. I'm, I'm not running barefoot on trails right now. I'm walking barefoot when I do my trail runs, but I'm not running on a trail just because 
I don't need to stub a toe or anything. And, and some of the trails around that I'm running on are pretty rocky and treacherous, but on, on the road, um, you know, easily up to two hours, I'm, I'm barefoot hundred percent, no shoes. All right. And, yeah. and how about daily, other daily, uh, activities, you know, like, uh, I don't know, like, uh, grocery shopping, uh, going out or, or just hanging out with friends, that kind of thing. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I pretty much keep a pair of sandals in my truck. You know, I can't walk into Whole Foods around here. I don't think you legally can walk in there barefoot. You got to put something on your feet. Right. So, um, I don't know. If, is that how it is up by you guys? You just can't walk into most places without a shirt or shoes. Well, it, that's what they say. But uh, after uh, years of research, I have uh, we have found out that it's uh, it's mostly uh, uh, a dress code thing rather than an actual legal thing. Okay. And uh, it's uh, there is a lot of uh, information, and also driving. There is a there, there is a, a lot of misconceptions yeah. about barefoot driving, and unfortunately, even police officers have the wrong information because there is no laws uh, that we know in anywhere in North America that uh, will prohibit anybody from operating a car in their feet. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it's it's a matter of I guess in in my case, it's more a matter of uh, of uh, 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 not being hassled, you know. I sometimes uh, I know the places where I can go barefoot, and I know the places where I know that I might have a little bit of trouble. And then, so I I do like you yourself, you know. I keep a pair of flip flops or whatnot in in the car and and bring them with me. Cargo pants are really useful. There you <laughs> because go. You just I, stick yeah. them in the cargo pocket, and then you, you're good to go. And yeah. yeah. Um, uh, now, uh, overall, uh, do you think people uh, in general would be healthier if they adopted a barefoot lifestyle or a more barefoot uh, friendly lifestyle, I should say? Oh, yeah, definitely. I actually recently wrote a post, I forget, it was somewhere this, maybe in April, um, just last month, called uh, Healthy People Equals Barefoot People. Okay. So I, I, I truly believe that... Uh, you know, someone who is able to even just walk, stand, be barefoot, that is going to improve their health. And even more so, the, the more healthy you are, the more you're able to go barefoot. In other words, it's harder for a, an unhealthy person, whether that's because they have an injury or their health overall is just poor, if they have some illness known to them or not, it's going to be harder for them to walk barefoot uh, usually due to the to the sensory overload of their of the bottom of their feet, right. more so if they if their health was was better. Okay. So yeah. So it uh, from what I'm hearing, it sort of like creates a vicious circle. If you start uh, uh, barefooting when you are healthier, your health will continue to 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 stay good, and therefore you're gonna be able to to uh, be barefoot for a longer time, whereas if you are already injured or uh, or have health problems, if you try to start going barefoot, it might be a little bit problematic to start with. Yeah, correct. And, and, and you know, someone who is someone who is unhealthy or, or injured, they can obviously still get to the barefoot, um, you know, the barefoot, re barefoot realm, uh, if you might say, but they're going to have a more difficult time. I still think it can be done, but it usually coincides with the improvement of their health. Now, obviously, you know, we all know that we're not talking about barefoot curing cancer here or anything like right, that, right? Or, or even the common cold. But I would say for a truly barefoot person who is, who's barefoot very often, like you and like I and many others, you know that you just sort of feel more alert right. physically, and mentally when you're when there's nothing between your feet and the earth, right? Correct. Right. Yeah, and there's. Yeah, and, uh, and there, sorry. Go ahead. No, I was just going. No, I was just going to say. You know, there, there's a huge impact to that to your health. Right. Right. Like uh, even starting from balance and all the way to awareness and yeah. all that. Now, uh, I've been reading very sporadically about earthing. I don't know if you've heard of that, and it's. Uh, I have, uh, and I've read the book. something to do with uh, the the Earth magnetism and uh, positively impacting our bodies when we are in direct contact with uh, the Earth's surface. Uh, mm -hmm. Do you have any any opinion on that? Or yeah, well, I, I have read the book Earthing, mm -hmm. um, and um, I mean, yeah, you want my opinion? I'll give you my opinion. I I think it's 
it's uh, how do I say this? Well, I, first of all, I'll say not 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 bashing the, the writers of the book. I don't think the book is very well presented. I, I think the book is way too general. I think some of the studies they talk about were very poor. They they could have um, gone into depth on some of the studies and not just talked about percentages of improvement without giving us before and after numbers. It was too general on how they, not to say the same word over and over, but generalize the whole thing of earthing. However, um, the book does bring up some really valid points, and, and I do think it's worth someone's read. Uh, it's a quick read, but you know, it basically talks about how you know the um, our, our bodies are electrically charged to some extent, and the more you can be in contact with the earth and have this grounded electrical flow through your body, then that can definitely improve your health. Right now, I I, I do agree with that. I I've actually even before I knew of that term earthing, I was aware of that based off what is called ionization. And a good way to look at this, which I don't really think they discuss in the book, is um, it's kind of like the person who gets a headache or maybe they have a joint pain, like say their knee hurts, okay. preceding okay. a storm. And this is the same reason why an animal can tell if like a like your dog, I know my dog is going to go hide in my laundry room before the storm is going to come. Okay. okay? And for most people watching, if they have an animal, especially a horse, right. then there, that animal knows weather changes before any human does. Mm -hmm. That is because of the changes in the ionization of the earth. So as the storm comes in, the, the ions of the earth change from more negative to, po to positive. And positive ions are actually unhealthier for us than negative ions. You kind of think of them as opposite. Negative ionization is more happy ions. Mm -hmm. um, so, so that's why people talk about ionizing their air and like air cleaners and stuff like that. And actually... Positive ions are higher, um, which are, you know, the negative ion is, ions, I'm sorry, are the, are the unhealthy ions, mm -hmm. the positive ones. You know, those are more plentiful in areas of smog, pollution. Um, actually, even air conditioning ducts will change the ionization from more negative unhealthy to more positive, more negative healthy to more positive unhealthy ions. So this also help happens with the ionization of the earth. And the reason I'm telling you this is because when someone is when someone's health is suffering they typically have more positive ions the unhealthy ions than negative ions okay, okay. so now so now the now this weather system is changing and their knee starts to hurt or their head starts to hurt or something in their body might hurt because they're already higher levels of positive ions or deficiency of negative ions are now increasing so they're going like from this to this right, right? A healthy person, if this was positive, might be already like this. They have a greater number of number of negative to positive. Right. Okay. So what will earthing do? Earthing will just bring you more like this. Okay. And if you're earth and you have more negative than positive and that weather system comes, well maybe now you're like this. Right. Rather than like this. Right. So so I think it's an important thing, and that's why, you know, walking barefoot and, you know, just being, you know, grounded or earthed or in connection with the earth and, you know, whatever word you want to use, absorbing those positive uh, negative ions from the earth and that electrical frequency um, can have, you know, an impact on your body, on your sleep. I know some people, one of my patients uses... Um, the earthing uh, pad to sleep in, you know, she plugs it into her grounding outlet by her bed, and she notices a, a, a big change with that. I, I, I will say, and I'm not against those, I think they're appropriate, they sure are better than a sleeping pill, but um, I would say that if someone sees a change with something like that, that they're probably missing some health problem that they should be taking care of. You know, I don't think we should necessarily need to be sleeping on those things, I don't think it's bad, and there's probably many things many people shouldn't be sleeping on, like you know, magnet mattresses, which I think are terrible, and other, uh, you know, some other synthetic type mattresses. Right. But, you know, that's, that's, a, that's a conversation we could talk about forever. But yeah, I think, I think earthing is, is important in a nutshell. Okay, so basically, yeah, like uh, uh, what I'm hearing again is uh, that contact, direct contact with earth is, is definitely positive because it, it, uh, it gives us some of that good energy that earth is, uh, is emanating. And, uh, yes. and and we are in direct touch with them, and there is nothing uh, or no better way of, of getting that easily other than being barefoot on the surface, right? 
yeah, it's like free healthcare in a way. And, you know, and obviously a mild sense, it's, it's, is it going to hurt you? No. Is it going to provide benefit benefits to you? Most likely. Great. Great. So, uh, um, now going back to athletes, uh, there's a, a big, big surge of uh, barefoot running over the last few years. And mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people are, there's a lot of controversy right now, uh, whether it's good for us, it's bad for us. Uh, people get into it too quickly and they get injured and that kind of thing. So what is your overall take on, on barefoot running uh, as, a, as a practice? Well, I think it's, I think it's important for someone to be able to barefoot run it's sort of like you know the next step beyond barefoot walking now do i think everybody needs to be barefoot running clearly not i don't you know you know i mean you should be able to do these things i think that's that's my message that's what i think people should understand in other words if you don't want to run barefoot that's completely right. fine but should you be able to run at least to the end of your driveway maybe you know however long that you know so let's say you know, 50 yards, you know, 50 meters, you're Canadian, right. uh, you know, you know, I mean, should you be able to jog that or at least do a brisk walk barefoot on that, on your concrete or asphalt, you know, paved way? Uh, I, I definitely think so. And if you can't, you know, because your feet hurt or there's too much sensory stimulation, then I think that's an issue. Right. Um, you, you know, so the, 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 you know, that you're getting into a lot of, you know, muscle balance, proprioceptive balance, kinesthetic sense of the feet, and obviously conditioning when you're talking about someone running further and further distances barefoot. Right. I, I definitely think that even if someone chooses not to run barefoot, that a minimalist, you know, less than four millimeter unsupported drop shoe, you know, no motion control, no, you know, very little heel or even a zero drop shoe is ultimately the best way to run so it's not altering gait or mechanics right. however obviously many people have problems with you know injuries that are still haunting them to some degree or health problems like we already talked about and they're unable to get to that you know low drop or zero drop minimalistic type shoe so they can't so they can't run that way so i think it's great that that, that a lot of people are talking about uh, you know, barefoot running today. I, and I don't think it's a fad like some other, you know, running thing, you know, running things that have gone on. I mean, there is actually still, I mean, you know, a lot of people obviously wearing some crazy over supportive flashy type shoes, right. but we as humans, we're always meant to run barefoot from, you know, our ancestral times, you know, millions of years ago. And, uh, you know, obviously because of today's lifestyle and the way, you know, people are under a lot of stress and their feet are weak and their bodies and health are, are, are weak and, and unfortunately very poor, then they're never going to get anywhere near um, a barefoot minimalistic type shoe. Right. Yeah. And it's, uh, it, we're always looking for a quick fix, I think. Uh, and yeah, uh, like, especially in, in North America, we have that mentality that if we, if we don't fix it quickly, it's not fixable. And that's that's it. And um, yeah. now uh, we also see uh, what I'm seeing recently is also that a lot of the barefoot athletes, uh, barefoot runners, and all that, they stop their barefooting right at the moment when they stop running. It's almost like uh, it reminds me of in in uh, 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 traditionally, for example, uh, karate or uh, martial uh, martial arts uh, practi practitioners. They would go into the class, be barefoot at the dojo, but as soon as they get out of class, they put flip flops or something on their feet. Uh, do you yeah. think that that change is is uh, is necessary, or or do you think it, it would be better for for the athletes to to start trying to push their barefooting boundaries a little bit further than just when they are practicing their, their sport. Oh yeah. I mean, you know, definitely the more barefoot, the better, right? I mean, if you're barefoot on a, on a mat, especially if you're talking about, you know, some sort of martial arts, I mean, let's face it, the, the average, you know, it's not too difficult to walk on a padded mat barefoot, right. correct? Yeah. Just about anybody can do that. But can you walk outside on some, uh, rocky asphalt? Mm -hmm. Probably not. Right. So, 
you know, the, those athletes are very unversatile, right? They're sort of conditioning themselves for their event, but they're not conditioning themselves for real life movement. Right. Um, I, I've this year I've been involved and, and will be even more so. I mean, I should say last year I was involved and this year I'll be more involved with uh, MoveNet type training, which is, you know, wilderness, um, wilderness, uh, real life training principles where we run, we climb, we we um, combine, you know, there's combativeness in it, swimming, um, a lot of, you know, outdoor, it's all, it's all outdoors from, from lifting and throwing rocks to climbing trees and bear crawling and, and running outdoors. And we do that all barefoot or as much uh, barefoot as much as possible. Wow. And when you can really develop your, your, um, the sensory aspect of your feet and your appropriate reception for, you know, climbing a tree and running on rocks and, you know, different surfaces from slick to rough to, to sharp and obviously to flat, then it really has a, a huge impact on your entire body. Um, and, you know, going back to what you were saying earlier, I think that a lot of these athletes who are, who are barefoot at certain times, they just, you know, they don't realize the, the um the benefits they can that they can achieve from being barefoot more often and you know I'm sure there's some cultural aspects to that too right, right? you know yeah so. because that sort of like brings it to my next uh, uh, comment is that it seems like in North America there's a a lot of fears about being barefoot outdoors you know like as soon as you step out of your house well even some people like being barefoot uh, like being in shoes in their houses. And uh, I hear mm -hmm. anything from my feet get too cold to, you know, I'm going to drop a chicken on my foot, uh, you know, like a frozen chicken on my foot. And I'm thinking, well, a pair of slippers is not going to protect you a lot from that frozen chicken, you know. <laughs> and, but, That's right. That's right. Uh, uh, but it seems to me like uh, we have grown to be a very paranoid society about like how our feet are going to react to the, the, uh, both the elements and the, uh, 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 and the environment. So, um, yeah. uh, do you think these fears are valid or do you think that we're just being overprotective overall? Oh, I mean, we're, we're overprotective with everything. I mean, I, I have three kids. I mean, you know, people see my kid climbing a flagpole, which, which my eight year old does often at, at our, at one of our, uh, co-op grocery stores and, uh, you know, <laughs> you know they, they freak out and she's up, you know literally like 20 or 25 feet um you know she's safe doing it she's very good at doing right. it um so i think people are overprotective and she does it barefoot too by the way she uh you know people are overprotective with with everything not just with kids but yeah with the feet too i you know i haven't heard the chicken one but i mean you know you do have to be smart about where you're going barefoot right i mean you know i see Say I see a landscaper. I mean, if you're out, you know, landscaping, mowing your lawn, and you're going to be around something that could, you know, fly and hurt your foot, you know, you you put something on at that time to protect your right. foot. Um, I don't think that's foolish. I don't. I don't think a barefooter should be have the mentality that you have to be barefoot a hundred percent of the right. time. I think it's just as bad as someone who says I'll never be barefoot because I want to protect my feet. You know, you don't need to be doing something stupid and hurt yourself because you didn't protect your foot. However, I, you know, I really think that those instances are, are, are very uncommon where someone feels like they need to actually protect their foot. Like you said earlier, you know, as you were, you were saying about dropping something on your foot, I think a great example of that is in, is in a gym where, you know, there's weight right. and usually gyms require, actually I'd say probably all gyms require some sort of footwear, you know, where you're, you know, because you could drop a weight on your foot. But as, as you just pointed out, you know, if I drop a, a, a 30, 40 or heavier pound weight on my foot, what is a thin little pair of shoes going to do to protect my foot? You know, maybe I, maybe I damaged three toes instead of four, yeah, right? exactly. It's not a big deal. And, I, and, and not to get off the subject, but I'll tell you, when I, when I have people, many people, um, go barefoot if they're able to at, at home when they're lifting or in a personal gym or at least in a very minimalistic mm -hmm. shoe. The one thing you hear, I'd say 100% of the time, is they're all stronger. They'll deadlift more weight. They'll squat more weight. They'll, th they, in general, can press more weight if they're barefoot and not wearing their traditional hefty 
you know, concrete shoes. Super padded, concrete shoes. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do you attribute this uh, to? Like, uh, uh, oh, okay, so let me understand very well. Like, if, if uh, let's say if I, I'm not very athletic per se, but if I went to a gym and started like working out regularly, uh, let's say if I worked out in traditional sneakers, and then I would uh, switch to working out in bare feet, I. It, you're telling me that I would notice that I would be able to lift more weight if I were barefoot. Yeah, you really would, and and I'm, um, you know, I would say the people watching this who think that's not true, they're the ones who have never okay. done it, because um, it's a common. It, the first time I was told that by some people, or actually a friend of mine, he's like, you know, I, I bought those new shoes you told me about, which were a zero drop type right. shoe, from his, you know, traditional like you know high top, you know, good good drop mm -hmm. shoe. He's like, yeah, I forget the numbers, but it was, he was like, I deadlifted 30 more pounds. And I was like, eh, really? You know, maybe you just had a good day, you know, you know, but I hear that all the time. And I think it's because you're just more balanced and, and, you know, you know, people always, you know, the big thing, as you know, in in just general sports and health is, you know, how often do you hear the word core? I hear it all too often. Oh, I got to train my core. You know, it's all about my core. Well, really? You know, there's more to your core. It's really your whole body you should be training that makes up your core, not just the center of your, you know, your 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 um your being your well being is or, or your or your body is the um you know, like your abdomen and your lower back and your glutes, but your whole body supports your core and, and your core supports that. So when you can, you know, really ground that and have complete balance and your foot is in contact with the actual ground and not a shoe that is in contact with the ground. You're going to feel that all the way up to your neck and, and, and down to your hands and, and you know, you're going to be able to grip more and, and support more weight. And it's, um, it's pretty unbelievable. You know, it doesn't mean that, you know, if you can, you know, squat a hundred pounds, you're all of a sudden going to do 150, right. but I'll tell you, if you could squat a hundred pounds for 10 reps and the 10th one was kind of hard, I bet you, you go barefoot, you know, Obviously, you're ready to go barefoot, right? You're not just doing that because, you know, you think right. you should. Then you you're you're going to uh, you'll see it'll be easier. It, it will definitely be easier if you're ready to go barefoot. Now, 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 remember, a lot of people aren't ready to go barefoot. They're just, you know, they're they're not their health or their 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 fitness isn't at that point. You know, this is definitely no recommendation to go from your traditional, you know, coffin like mm -hmm. shoe, right? Your, your 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 foot coffin to a barefoot shoe. I mean, you you will you could easily hurt yourself because your foot has been de your foot has never developed, and your lower body and your feet are just so weak from years of wearing traditional shoes. So you know, there's that transitional period. You just don't want to go right to barefoot, even more so when you're talking about running and things like mm -hmm. that. You know, I know people around here, or everywhere. You know. You always hear the story, oh, you know, oh, my podiatrist or my medical doctor said, you know, I, I shouldn't have gone barefoot. That's why I hurt myself. And, you know, usually what happened is that person, because of everything, you know, they sort of wanted to be in the barefoot club or try it out. They, they, um, you know, they've never been barefoot and all of a sudden they ditch their shoes and go run around the track and do a mile. And next thing you know, their feet are killing them or they hurt themselves or they injured a muscle. And, you know, now all of a sudden barefooting is bad. Well, that was not barefooting bad. That's that was right. stupid. Yeah, because right. for example, just today I was uh, out downtown doing some biking, and uh, I was wearing my uh, uh, my toe shoes, my Vibram. Um, and uh, the only reason I wasn't barefoot is because I cannot really uh, pedal with uh, without a little bit of uh, support, or well, not support, but a little bit of protection between my soles and the yeah. spikes of the bike. Right. Anyway, I saw this uh, guy crossing the street, and he was wearing uh, Vibram shoes too. And uh, I was really happy to see somebody else doing it. And uh, but then he started jogging, and uh, I was really, really horrified to see that he was landing with his heels every step. Oh, that and I tried to flag him and 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 talk to him, but uh, he was wearing his earphones. He didn't even see me, and he just and I was like, okay, well. There's another guy who probably will think that uh, after a couple months, you know, like, uh, or or a few outings, you know, like his heels are going to be killing him and then he's going to start saying that barefooting is not a, as good. And um, again, going uh, about transition, I was talking to uh, to a uh, uh, registered massage therapist uh, 
the other day who also embraces barefooting and he was telling me that uh, as good as minimalist shoes are, are in order to pro promote the, the right ergonomics and the, uh, and the, uh, and the right uh, biomechanics, also they can, uh, they can potentially promote injuries because of the protection that they, they have on our feet. Uh, because he said our skin is the best uh, uh, feedback that we can get. If our skin gets sensitive out of uh, either walking or running in bare feet, it's a, a much more effective trigger for us to say, okay, this is a good time to stop as opposed to uh, going farther because we don't have that sensory uh, feedback with the minimalist shoes and then end up injuring and uh, end up with a, a deeper injury in, a, in the muscles or, or in the tendons. Do you think that uh, that's mm -hmm. correct or do you, what do you think about that? Yeah, no, that, that's a good point. And clearly you uh, have done your homework. I mean, you're, you're very knowledgeable in this and, and that's a hundred percent correct. And it's a great thing to talk about because I think, and I think Vibram's a great company. Um, I, I know some of the people at Vibram, they, um, they they promoted my shod chimp shirt. You know, have you seen oh, my yes, chimp yes. shirt? Unnatural shirt, right? Um, you know, so I appreciate them their support, and um, I think that there's, you know, pe people sort of associate barefoot with Vibram, right? I mean, that's very common. Usually, if you tell someone, "Oh, I'm a barefoot," or or I wear barefoot type shoes, the average person would say, "Would Would you agree?" They would say, "Oh, you wear the Absolutely, toe shoes." Yeah. Yeah, now there's some knockoffs. Some, you know, Fila has the four toe shoes, and, and there's some other, you know, knockoff shoes. But Vibrams are still the best in terms of the right. toe shoes. But I do think, I think the word that we're all looking for is that they give you a false sense of security, right? right? Is what it comes down to. And although they're great, there, there's plenty of people, as you know, that can't walk barefoot, but they could walk in their Vibrams all day long. Now, that's, that's still great. Um, you know, they're still, they're still going to have a, a, a very positive impact on, on their body. And I think to some degree their health, but guess what? You're still not barefoot. And, and I, I use the term barefoot shoes too, which is kind of an oxymoron. You know, you really can't have a barefoot yeah. shoe and it's really not the correct term. I think we just get caught up in that, but let's face it. There's not, there's no such thing. You're either barefoot or right. you're in a shoe. And though a Vibram or any zero drop or minimalistic type shoe, I, I really like Vivo Barefoots. Um, I'm, I'm just not into the toe, the, the toe splaying shoes as much as I like my, my foot in a shoe. Mm -hmm. It's just me. Uh, it's mm -hmm. what I wear for on the trails and, and when I wear shoes are, are more Vivo Barefoot. But I'm not, I'm not paid or sponsored. I just, that's what I like. And if people like Vibram, right. that's great. But I still realize and, and like people to realize that, you know, there's still something in between my foot and the ground. And, you're not truly barefoot and you're, you're missing out on really the true benefits of barefoot. If you're in those, you know, if you're in any shoe with even a millimeter of something in between your, your foot right. and the ground. And, and it is that false sense of security that, uh, you know, it, it, it can, it can harm somebody to, to some degree and, you know, cause, you know, a, 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 an injury that could have been prevented if they were, used to going barefoot all the time. I'll give you a quick example, actually. When I started running barefoot, which was uh, April 9th of last year, I don't know why I remember that. Clearly, that was memorable to me if it was my first right. barefoot run. And I, I, I scuffed up my big toe pretty good. And, and I'm sure some of your listeners have done this. You know, you kind of just cut some of the skin on the, out, the outside of your big toe when your, your foot comes down and you drag it. And, you know, you, you never do that. I've never done that on my, in my running shoe, or at least not that I know of or knew of. Um, but now when you're barefoot, you're so much right. more aware of what it is. And, and guess what? That hurts. And you're not going to do that. You're not going to keep on doing that when you've got a big bloody yeah. toe. I did twice. Um, once as it was healing up about three or four weeks later and reopened that one. And what I realized was, is that my gait was off and my, my left leg and, and my, my dorsiflexion of my foot was, was, kind of out of sync with the rest of my body and I was able to change that so my running improved 
because I was now aware of how my foot was was landing and pushing off during the gait cycle. And, you know, I, I've been a runner since, well, my whole life, but especially competitive in high school, tw- you know, 20 something years ago. And I would have never known that if I was barefoot, I could be, you know, scuffing my toe once a run and not even know it because I have the shoe there to protect me. But now without the shoe, I've, you know, become a better runner, a stronger runner, a more balanced runner, a more efficient right. runner because of, because I don't have anything protecting my foot. And, you know, you, you have a, you, you, you lower the margin of error. You can't screw right. it up, right? Yeah, it's, it's happened to me many times uh, just walking because I, I, don't, I don't run, but I do go for power walks. And the, the mm-hmm. same thing happened to me, what you're describing with your big toe happened to me a number of times when I started walking, just walking around barefoot and on the street. And then I, I scraped my, the, the, the tip of my, my toe, like not to the degree that it bled, but it did make me aware, okay, you know what? I need to lift my toes a little bit when I, and I mean, I don't have the, yep. all the knowledge of the, 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 the granularity of knowledge of, of uh, an, anatomy that you have, but even with my limited knowledge, I could adjust my gait to, to the point where I say, okay, well, I walk better now and I can, yep. I, I, I'm way more comfortable and I don't even need to watch. I just walk. And so self, self-awareness, right? Absolutely. Many friends comment on this. They say, you know, like, I don't know how you can just walk barefoot without even looking down. And then I, I just, I don't really know how to explain it to them because I said to them, you know what, uh, you need to try it in order to to be able to know how, how I do it because the other day also I was even texting on my phone while I was walking and then all of a sudden I thought, oh, you know, I was walking barefoot and I was texting. I was really, really not even looking uh, for a few seconds, you know, yeah. that where I was going. I mean, I slowed down a little bit, but... Uh, uh, it's it's amazing how the 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 sensory the the uh, how sensory our feet are and how much of feedback they give you. And yeah, yeah, and, and that's a good point because you know the I mean you look at the three main areas of feedback that your body uses right. to balance, and you've got you've got your right. eyes right, your inner ear, which is why if you you spin yourself, you know you get a right. little bit dizzy. So that's your vestibular system. And then your your sensory system, your eyes, and then the third one is 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 your proprioception, the balance, and the, and what's what's known as the kinesthetic sense, the sensory, um, the sensory feedback coming from right. your feet. So, you know, who, you know, if you had to pick one group who barefoot inning is probably the best therapeutically for therapeutically right. is the key word. It's the elder, it's the elderly. Watch an elderly person walk. First of all, they all have these terrible orthopedic right. shoes that are you know, like this thick all the way through they haven't felt the ground right. in years you know they, they put on slippers when they get out of bed and the slippers are probably supportive too or hard you know can't bend them um and and watch an elderly person they cannot the average person cannot walk without looking at the ground right. in front of them you know you're at a you're at a sporting event or something like that or you know, you watch a, a, you know, I was at a soccer game and you see an elderly person walk along the bleachers, you know, to get to their seat. They are so unsteady, you know, scaringly unstable, uh, trying to watch where their foot is going because this is what they have is the eyes, which obviously tend to go as you get older and your, your vestibular system, your ears, because the sensory feedback from the feet is right. gone. And think about how, think about how much you can prevent falls in these people you know and and you know a lot of times a fall in an elderly person equals death that that's a fact you know they fall they break a bone and very often they die soon after that that's that's a harsh reality of things right. um because their health is bad or they don't rehab correctly from it but now now some people am, am i saying barefoot is pre- could could barefoot prevent some deaths uh, you know based off that scenario Someone's wearing poor shoes for so long, they lose their balance, they fall, they break a bone, they don't recover, they die from it, or they get a blood clot from the fall. I don't think that's much of a stress if you a stretch if you look at that right. medically. Would you agree? It, it really isn't. Um, but these people, their their health is so poor because of the shoes that they're put in because they're already so stable. And 
I think that's the biggest group. Obviously, kids should, and everybody should be barefoot. I don't think kids should ever be in shoes, or, or very rarely should they be in shoes. But you know, therapeutically, uh, you know, geez, they should have programs for the elderly to be walking barefoot rather than going on you know, water aerobics or some of this other stuff right. that they're doing. It's so nuts. even in their water aerobics, they wear uh, um, water shoes. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. You're, yeah, you're right. Yeah, just in case the bottom of the pool yeah, is rocking. exactly, or because they want to to prevent <laughs> uh, some slipping or something. Now, uh, what Crazy. do you think uh, uh, is the future of barefooting in in North America? Uh, do you think uh, the information is getting to the right people, and uh, and people are are getting more receptive to it? Are we? Uh, uh, I mean, my dream would be. Uh, I've always said it, you know, like, I don't want everybody to go barefoot if they don't want to do it. However, leave me or let me go barefoot if I if that's my choice. And let me go barefoot everywhere because I'm comfortable being everywhere, except for the winter, of course, you know, like, because I'm a very logical person, too. Sure. I see shoes the way I see gloves, you know. If I uh, need protection on my hands, chances are I will need them on my feet, whether it's because of temperature or, or surface of, or whatnot. But um, anyway, going back to the original question, what do you think the future holds for us barefooters? Uh, well, you know, I, I, I've always said that um, my, my analogy for that, because I, I, you know, I, I think about it like as you do, is that a good analogy for where we are I believe with the whole barefoot um, mm -hmm. movement, maybe you mm -hmm. want to call it that, you know, maybe there's a better word for it is, and, and not to go off topic here, but I feel like it's much like dentists who use silver amalgams to fill okay. teeth. And I say that, and I don't want to get into that. That's a whole nother mercury association that you've probably heard in the, the news is, is, These groups have, you know, held on to the belief that mercury doesn't cause health problems for many years. And, and now, you know, there's there's evidence that it has. And but they're still kind of holding the, they'll never admit they're wrong, but they're still holding truth that, you know, there's that, that there's some benefits to those. And I, I use that analogy because I see it similar with those who are opposing the movement of the barefoot, you know, the, the barefoot lifestyle. And those are typically podiatrists obviously who are have, are big supporters and uh, financially especially of orthotics and um you know shoe companies a lot of money there you know you can kind of look at the shoe companies of, of like the you know the, the american dental association if you want to use that analogy with, right. with the teeth and the films um so there The resistance is going to be huge, um, and it already is, obviously. You know, I have some very good podiatrist friends who are, are you know, they don't make orthotics. They're very smart, well-educated individuals and um, doctors, and they, you know, they... They wear, they wear Vibrams in the office, and, and they, they um, you know, they recommend their patients to, to go barefoot and teach rehabilitation naturally and um, not through, you know, corrective means that only tend to support a problem rather than fix it. Um, you know, I think that th there's there, that's always going to be there, you know, for whatever reason. And, you know, you're just going to have these groups you know, say that being barefoot is the wrong way to go. And, and part of that is because they're saying, and, and I get this a lot because I'm very anti-orthotics on my, on my website and I don't right. hide that, but people, people are so unhealthy in general. The average person is so unhealthy that when they try to go to a lesser shoe, not even talking barefoot, when they try to get out of the orthotics or to a lesser shoe, they feel worse. And if that person's health problems, musculoskeletal and other health problems are corrected, They can do those things, but the average doctor, the average physician, the average therapist, the average person is, does not know how to correct their health problems or has no concern or, 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 or um, you know, goal to correct their health problems. And therefore they need to be in those supportive right. shoes to support their dysfunction. So they think that barefooting is bad because They only see problems when they try to take somebody out of their supportive right. shoe. But the is, is that they haven't figured out why the person is having the problem, so they need the supportive shoe. Right. Right? 
So I saw that's what's happening. I just saw actually a woman, uh, you know, two days ago on Friday in my office, five pairs of orthotics. That's a record in my office. Yeah, she had one for every oh pair God. of shoes. Walking, work, golf, home, and some other pair. She had five pairs of orthotics because she didn't want to switch them. A lot of people just buy one right. pair and they switch them or two. She had five pair. And if these and are custom made, they're a mint, uh, every every one of them, at least four or five hundred dollars for what I understand, right? Oh, yeah, I'd say minimum three hundred, and and yeah, and insurance usually pays for them too, which is crazy because they're they're not paying for mining your sandals, right. you know, you know, right? So, uh, you know, she she said, you know, I I can't even walk, you know, around my house barefoot, my feet kill, but and I, I can walk in more at my orthotics about a mile, and then my feet hurt. So clearly, the orthotics look like they're right. beneficial to her, you know, and her thick. Asics, you know, just like any many other shoes, you know, with the orthotics in them, allow her to walk a little bit over a mile. She still can't walk very far, but you know, in the house, she can't even walk barefoot at all. By the time I corrected many things on her body, uh, many muscular issues, actually, just that day, she walked around my office several times barefoot and even jogged out to her car on the asphalt to get her running shoes to show me which one she was wearing because we were able wow. to correct those things. So, you know, in a, in a typical office, that podiatrist is not going to see that because what do they do? They look at the foot. They say, oh, you have foot pain. Let's put a brace or a cast on that, which is obviously an orthotic. Let's put you in supportive shoes. And, oh, now your pain is gone? Well, I provided you with a service. And, and unfortunately, that's how they're trained. And then they see they see improvement with that, so they think that being barefoot is bad. They think it's unnatural, and it's completely the opposite. They're 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 they've missed the big idea behind that, and they'll never get a person out of that um, realm of discomfort, realm of unhealthiness because of 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 um, the way they have been taught and trained, and that um, that training that they are, um, you know representing to that or, or, or um, you know, discussing with the patient or, or teaching right, the patient, I right. should say. Yeah, so there is a, a, a fair bit of resistance over the, the future, but I guess I, I, we all hope that all this information is getting uh, to, the, to, the, to the receptive people and then we're going to start seeing some more barefooting or at least some more uh, positive attitude towards uh, barefooting. Yeah, I compare it to yeah. something like uh, when uh, vegans and vegetarians first started their their uh, their journey. You know, like so many years ago, people would even make fun of them. But now, it's so oh, well see. accepted. I mean, it's obviously not for everybody. And I mean, I'm not a vegan or a vegetarian, but I respect somebody who is. I respect their decision, and I don't criticize it. So that's the that's way absolutely. I would love to to get uh, to uh, the same level of acceptance for, for barefooting. But anyway, this has been a wonderful chat and uh, we've tried a couple times to get together and because of scheduling and, and whatnot, we haven't been able to. And uh, But I really thank you for uh, for taking the time to, to talk to me. I know you're a very busy um, doctor and uh, and really great great chat. And we'll make sure to visit yeah. your both your websites and and uh, and hopefully our our uh, our audience will uh, will take a look as well. Sounds great. Yeah, I had a really good time. Uh, great amount of I think we shared a great amount For of knowledge. For sure, we'll uh, we'll need to chat again in the in the future. All right. Thanks very Sounds much. Sounds good, Mo. Thanks. Take care.